The British Medical Journal reports the findings of a major randomized control trial and cost assessment of the Alexander Technique. What sorts of problems did the patients who took part have to start with? The back problem started when I was about 18 years old from an injury doing fireman's carry in uh, Royal Marines exercises, violin playing especially in standing on parade, but violin playing, I, I was sat using bad habits and I had to create a way of undoing those problems when my back pain was getting really bad by then. I had to stop working, I couldn't work, I didn't work for a year because I, I was in so much pain and I it progressed to the point where walking was difficult, sitting was difficult, so you can imagine primary school teaching was impossible because it involves standing, it involves twisting, it involves being very active, bending with small children. I couldn't do my job. Occasionally I was sort of on my back for a week at a time uh, and then the hospital took over and I had traction and they were threatening me with a corset and so that didn't sound good to me and um, also male vanity was involved. I saw a photograph of myself with shoulders really arched, sort of Neanderthal man. The Alexander Technique is um, about learning how to become more aware of your body in everyday life and learning to um, understand the ways in which we often tighten our bodies up, which takes us out of balance. And when we're out of balance, and obviously when we're engaging with different tasks, whatever it might be, um, lifting chairs or sitting at the office or making the beds or hoovering, whatever, then we need to be able to use our body in a balanced, light way rather than some of the habitual ways that we have learnt throughout our lives. What we do when someone comes to us with back pain, we're looking at the way they use their whole body. We're not looking specifically at the area of them that hurts. We're not looking just at their back. We don't diagnose a specific problem, but we look at how they move. Through my hands, I can feel what muscle pulls are operating in their body whilst they're moving. And that can include things that seem static, like just sitting in a chair. How are they supporting themselves while they're sitting in a chair? I'm looking at all this, and I'm helping them to work out how they got into that situation. When you're born, you're born with a natural balance and poise, and coming along for lessons will help you get back in touch with that. So when you watch young children running around and moving freely, we all have that in us, potentially. Um, obviously, as you get much older, then that does begin to change. But there's a lot of balance and freedom available to us, and we just don't realise that half the time. I got involved in the research through knowing Paul Little. I knew Paul because his wife, Alison, had had severe back pain. And both Alison and her mother had Alexander lessons. So Paul saw at first hand two people to whom he was very close benefit hugely. Paul Little was the leading author on both of the BMJ's reports and he knows such studies must be conducted with scientific rigour. I would expect people to be sceptical. I'm, I'm a sceptical chap myself. I'm a, I'm a professional researcher as well as being a GP. And, and uh, you, you should be sceptical, I think. There are a lot of uh, uh, complementary things on offer and patients and doctors want to know what actually works and the only real way of showing what works is, is reasonable research. So I think it's important to have good evidence for both patients and doctors. The results that we get from it with a, a large trial are likely to be robust. Um, it's not just 600 patients, it's 600 patients across a whole range of practices in southern England with getting on for 30 teachers and lots of massage therapists. So you can't attribute these results to just one particularly good enthusiastic teacher. When Richard came for lessons, his back pain was interfering with his life and his passion, which is playing the violin. So when Richard comes for lessons, what we're going to be looking at are how he uses his body, not just when he's playing the violin, but in everyday simple activities. If you use your body poorly, if you use it with effort, tension and stiffness, then the way your body functions is going to be interfered with and functions such as mobility, functions such as circulation, functions such as respiration are all interfered with by poor body use. The first few Alexander Technique lessons with added exercise seem to make a real difference to most subjects. After the first lesson I felt completely different, just a, a, a great sense of lightness and feel taller and everything just feels easier. 
For me, that was a brilliant thing about the technique, that as you keep having lessons, what you learn means that you can really maintain that um, sense of balance and lightness when you're on your own. What really made sense to me about the technique was the idea that it was something that I was doing myself and that I could get an awareness of what it was I was doing and then and stop doing it, basically. Debbie Sharp was another key author of the BMJ papers. The way that we used the Alexander technique in, in the study was very much to give people the opportunity to learn for themselves some ideas how they might look after their back not just when they're having the lessons, but later on. I think that's why we found an effect at 12 months. People weren't having lessons at 12 months, but if their back problem had persisted, they could use the Alexander technique, or if their back problem had recurred, they could recall the skills and get on and start to do some practicing again. It was amazing. Uh, I, wasn't, I hadn't read anything, and uh, the particular teacher didn't tell me a great deal, but what she did was to get me in and out of the chair, and that was quite extraordinary. Uh, I'd sort of, I was moving in a way that felt very strange to me, but with great ease. Did you notice that tendency to want to just... Certainly, you know, months later, I noticed the shoulders were further back, and I noticed that you know, I wasn't sort of stooping quite so much. When Emily came for lessons, what we were working with was helping her to find a way of releasing some of that pain. So she got out of the cycle of pain creating more tension and the tension creating more pain. This is a vicious cycle that is very easy to get into. If you are in pain, you do tense up and that tensing in itself tends to create a situation where more pain comes in. With the Alexander Technique, it's much more gentle, it's much more changing the way you think and that then affects the way you use your body. I was distorting myself almost. I mean, you see people walking around with very strange you know, people pull down that posture and you think, well, how did somebody get to that? And this technique actually shows us how we do get to that point and that actually you don't have to get to that point. At the end of a year, people who'd had no intervention um, had about 21 days of reported pain in the last month. And uh, if you had six lessons of Alexander Technique, you'd improve that by about 10 days. And if you had 24 lessons of Alexander Technique, you'd improve that by about 18 days. So you've gone down from 21 days to about three days of reported pain. So really quite a marked improvement. Although it's just one trial, um, this is a big trial with lots of teachers in lots of practices. So I think it's very unlikely that actually these results wouldn't be replicated. So I think actually this is an example of one large trial where the, uh, the NHS might consider using it. And certainly it's something that GPs can advise to their patients as something that is likely to be helpful. In the Alexander community, we're absolutely delighted that this trial has been done because obviously for those of us who practice it and work with other people, we've seen the benefits for years and years and years. And yet it's been one of those things that's been quite hard to kind of get across, particularly to the medical profession, that it is something that can help a lot of people and doesn't involve drugs. Um, and uh, so it's been really exciting to, to see the trial in progress and then to see the results that came out. The slight catch is um, that it's not a technique that's a magic bullet. It's something that you have to learn. And so you have to be prepared to put in time to learn it. It's one thing to show that something works in a, a private setting where people are likely to be highly motivated, they're paying for it. And it's another thing to show that it might work in a setting where it's being provided for you. So I think that's one of the great values of this trial. If I hadn't been recommended it by somebody, a respected person in the medical profession, I would never have come to it. It really does work and it's not about taking tablets or having an operation or continuously paying somebody to make you better. You can make yourself better. I think thousands of GPs are, are very keen to find something that's going to help their patients with back pain. If you think about the fact that you just got one back, only one, nobody's going to give you another one unfortunately. And for the cost of say a holiday, you can invest in learning to look after your back, learning to look after yourself in a way that's going to last you the rest of your life. I think that's got to be good value for money.